before I get into the video, I just want to thank all of you guys who watch these videos. And I also want to specifically thank the patrons. Really appreciate you guys. I've had a few more signups over the past week and I'm very grateful to all of you guys because you really do help me make these videos. And anybody that wants one-on-one -on -one video interactions with me, wants me to critique their videos, wants to participate in Q and A's, uh, feel free to join. I'm gonna link it in the description. I'm actually going to make one or two of the older Q and A answer answers that I've recorded public pretty soon just to give you guys a taste of what goes on with the patreon group but um this is just a quick little video that i'm gonna make where i'm responding to some questions i don't have extremely long to talk because if you hear i'm kind of losing my voice unfortunately i got covid i'm pretty sure i got it on the flight back from paris where i was for vacation it is what it is it was a great trip Sometimes you pay for the good times that you have with a uh, little sickness. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to answer just a few of the comments that I got on the last video. And these are all great comments that I appreciate. You know, some of these comments are really what makes me keep making these videos. These are some of the notable comments that I recognized and it's just a good idea for a video. So the first comment is from glazed 6981 thank you for watching and it is what's your method for doing stairs i started in march and got to ollie a four stair a few times but i sprained my ankle pretty bad and haven't been able to skate for the last two months i love the ollie stairs and i want to keep going higher but i'm honestly kind of scared now and i never used to be being 21, I feel like I started too late to be able to send anything besides an ollie down something big. Any input from anybody would be solid. Thank you. Well, first off, I'm sorry about your sprained ankle. Um, those are some of the most prevalent injuries that I experienced as a beginner. I've probably had maybe 20 sprained ankles. I know it's, it's like more than 15. And most of them were sustained as a beginner. I don't sprain my ankle. I didn't have it sprained my ankle very much. In fact, it was like more than a decade between sprained ankles. Like the last one that I had was in 2020 and it was particularly horrible. And that was just me trying to avoid one dangerous part of a spot and forgetting that I was stepping onto a curb and just folding my ankle over, damaging my ligaments, it took me a year to fully recover. And the one before that was uh, skating stairs and probably what happened to you, maybe for a different reason. I landed tail sliding a hubba, it's like a, a pretty, a big hubba, like chest high, it's down like a, a 12 stair and the ground was like asphalt. So when I landed, I landed on the bolts but my wheels went into that mushy ground and it sent my front foot over the edge and I sprained that ankle so badly. And I remember um, it took me about three months to heal. And after two months, I flew to India for a stunt show and I had to do the rehearsals for that stunt show. So it, I was there for six weeks or I was there for eight weeks. The first two weeks were rehearsal. And then for six weeks, I did four shows a day, four to six shows a day five days a week and the first week and a half was just brutal. I had this uh, ankle brace on and one of the obstacles that I skated as a part of our choreography was a handrail down like a seven stair. And uh, so it was really brutal to get, to get tricks down on that. I could only do like a front board and a front nose, you know, because uh, my ankle just wasn't with it yet. Um, but what I'll say is, Spraining your ankle on stairs when I was younger, a lot of the reason that I did it was because I was skating my boards really long. And so the nose and tail would wear down and I would land too far on them. And then my foot would flip over and I'd sprain it. Another thing with spraining ankles is that I used to push my legs down when I caught the trick. You know, it's like you're anticipating landing so much, you're so happy to have caught the trick that you just push your legs down. And that caused me to sprain my ankles a lot too. So, my biggest tip for skating stairs is 
to get your flat ground down really well first, you know? Um, the skating of the stairs is gonna be a lot easier if you're confident in whatever you're doing. And so, just get confident with your ollie for now. Uh, don't push it if your ankle still hurts at all. Don't go jumping downstairs not now. Wait until you feel better and only you are gonna know when's the right time. But wait until that right time and drill your flat ground tricks so well that you can do them and they're like second nature before you start taking them downstairs. The other thing is learn how to bail properly and I'm gonna do a video on how to bail properly pretty soon. Some people have been asking me for that, but yeah, it is imperative that you know how to bail before you go skating stairs. So that means if you're trying to kickflip and you kickflip and you catch the board, but you know it's not right, you know how to push the board away with your feet and then how to land on your feet and roll, because it's important to roll. I planted for most of my skating and I didn't start rolling until like a decade ago. And like I would just I jumped down the Hollywood 16 like I think like four weekends in a row and I was planting every try and I remember Shad Lambert who was shooting photos of it on his MySpace that's how long ago this was posted some of the images of me and my buddy skating the 16 and one of them was me grimacing when I kicked out and landed at the bottom of the 16 stair and it, it just looked painful so learn how to bail dial your tricks in and make sure your ankle is in good shape before you start jumping down stairs again. Another thing that might help is learning the speed of your tricks. So learning to do your tricks faster because inevitably you're going to go faster when you're skating stairs because you're afraid. So try to get that down. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. So the next one is from Alter Ijo 164. Clever name. I like that. Not skating every day makes me forget a lot of these points. I think at some point skaters realize these tips subconsciously from skating a lot. This series has helped me a lot being in and out of skating. Hearing these ideas out loud would have benefited me a lot in my early days, so keep them coming. Thank you very much. I'm gonna keep them coming. Uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people don't come across these tips through trial and error. I'm someone who, like when I was young, I put so much of my focus into skateboarding and into like figuring out what it was that I was doing wrong because all it took was a couple people giving me pointers and showing me things like, for instance, when I first heard that I needed to look at the board, you know? And that's something that'll help the last guy with his question too. When you're skating stairs, you gotta be looking at your feet and board. As much as, like you look at the edge of the stairs and then right back to your feet. But back to this, when that person told me that I was staring out into space and not at my feet and that that was gonna get me hurt and that's why I was missing certain tricks, that changed everything for me. And it only took a couple tips like that for me to start looking at my skating analytically. Like, okay, trying to do this trick, I've landed it once. Why am I not doing this? Because so often people just, and I, and I see it all the time, and I'll make a point to give someone tips. If I see someone trying a trick and they're making the same mistake over and over and over and not correcting it, I'll maybe pull them to the side and, and, and show them what I've observed and go over it a couple times. And a lot of times I can help people. Like I, so I helped this dude land a heel flip the other day. I helped another kid land a hard flip right after I had just learned how to hard flip again. And it's just... Sometimes we're not able to stay present when we're doing something that's physically demanding and scary like skateboarding. So sometimes these tips that, are, that seem obvious when we're able to scale out and, and, and just kind of look at things analytically, but they don't, these, these revelations don't always come to people. And that's why I make these videos because I have been teaching people how to skate for almost 14 years now. And these are things that I've noticed that when I give people certain tips, it opens up doors and then it facilitates them learning more tricks. Um, what I'll say if you keep getting injured is just don't try to rush back into skating so quickly. Like whenever I'm coming off an injury, for the first like five or 10 sessions, I make myself only do really basic stuff. When I show up at the park, I'll make myself only pump 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 because you skateboarding it, it involves feel so much 
And that's what you lose. You lose the feel and experience when you're injured. So whenever you get injured and you find yourself forgetting the techniques and the tactics that you use to skate the best, don't rush yourself, ease back into it, and just fixate on the little things, the pumping, the rock to fakies, the axle stalls, the ollies, you know, the, the front side and back side 180s, the things that require a lot of feel to do properly, and then ease back into the more difficult maneuvers. Alter Eho, thank you for watching and thank you for commenting. Okay, the last one of these says, I'm learning how to ollie and shove it since four months, each day for an hour, but I can't do it. I'm losing the motivation and the fun I had in the beginning. Is it okay just to cruise around and do no tricks? Or am I labeled as a poser if I do? And this is from Yao Ming 376. And this one is really what made me want to make this specific video because the idea that someone would be a poser because they're just cruising around and not doing tricks is something that comes from my era of skateboarding, right? When I was young, people were so quick to call people posers. That's where the mall grab comes from. You know, like I understand the sentiment as skating was like a fringe activity. And so as people that are involved in fringe activities or fringe movements, fringe subcultures, I was once heavily involved in punk rock. And you know, like a lot of times people will pick at punk rock per se and they'll say, well, like they're supposed to be nonconformist, but they wear a uniform. And from someone looking at it from the from the from the outside looking in right like just being a civilian that makes sense but i think if you consider it from a different perspective a lot of times people who are involved in a fringe community they want to be able to find people who are like-minded and adopting that uniform is a way for them to distinguish or it was a way to distinguish between who is friendly and who's not friendly. Now in today's climate, things are a lot different. So you don't have to, I only be around people who think and look the same way as you. There is a, a large swath of society that's more accept, accepting of a lot of things. That's why you find people who have no ties to punk culture adopting a punk rock aesthetic. And it's just a look to them. And so people that are into things like punk rock and skateboarding are not harassed and pushed to the fringes. And so they don't want to only interact with people that are like-minded because there's no need to because the judgment isn't there. So to you, I say, you should just push around and cruise. And in fact, I do that all the time. You know, sometimes I just don't feel like skating. Like, and when I, when I say skating, I mean, What's skating to me, which is it requires a lot of energy and it takes a big toll on my body. Like I'm someone who has multiple times tried a trick and skated until when I went home, I was I had brown colored liquid in my urine, you know. So when I go out and skate, I push myself and I push myself a lot further than the majority of people are probably willing to push themselves. And it's, it, I'm not always capable of dialing that back. So a lot of times I want the feeling of skating, but I don't feel like engaging in all of that, right? I don't have the bandwidth at that time due to whatever's going on in my life, you know? So I'll go out and just push and I have a cruiser. I always have a cruiser set up. Sometimes I just want to feel that feeling of wood to aluminum to urethane to concrete. It's a unique feeling that us skaters experience and if you know, you know. If you don't, you need to get out there and push because you can't get that feeling anywhere else. So if you're getting frustrated trying ollies and shove -its, go out and push by all means. And if anyone calls you a poser, I'll say this and uh, all my punk rock people will understand what that means. Um, and I'll also say that as a beginner, the point in your skill acquisition that you're at is very demanding, right? You don't have muscle memory, you don't have experience, and you're building these things. And so the tricks that you're trying, they're coming at the worst possible time, right? For me, when I'm trying to learn, let's say I was trying to do a nollie inward heel, front side, nose slide, 
shove it out before, right? I've done all of the individual pieces of that trick. So it's just a matter of me being able to slow it down, being able to figure out little micro tweaks. Do I put my foot front, my back foot closer to the front foot so that by the time I'm in the front nose, my foot still has space so that the shove it is easier to maneuver, right? Whereas you don't have the experience to know which tweaks you need to make. And so trying these novel movements can be extremely frustrating at your point. And it's important to remember that skating is supposed to be fun and that if the acquisition of a specific skill is eroding the fun that you're having skating, then by all means, do something else. Go focus on pumping. Go focus on kick turning. Those things are also vital. Learning how to control your board. Uh, all of those things can be fun. So don't feel like you have to do tricks every waking moment, every skating moment, I should say. Uh, just have fun. That's what it's about. And let me make sure that's all of the questions. I think that's all of the ones that I wanted to address. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. Losing my voice, so it's, this is the perfect time. Um, enjoy skateboarding, because I didn't skate the whole time I was in Paris, and I was thoroughly expecting to have skated, but I've been back for days now. Still haven't been able to, so I'm jonesing to get out and skate. Probably won't be able to for another few days because I have a ridiculous headache. And every time I move my head too quickly, feels like my I can feel my brain rattling in there, which anyone who's had COVID has probably experienced that. I've had this like the fourth time I've had it and I've got that same feeling every single time. It's a consequence of being around a lot of people and especially teaching kids. I caught it from my students a couple times, um, but uh, I'll live. Check out www.clubdist.com to pick up some collage stuff. Use the code Norman for a 20% discount.